Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad. This is my channel, Adam and Orange, where I build and review a lot of 3D metal models. And today on the table, we have the Marvel Tank from Time for Machine. And if you haven't already guessed by the title of this video, this is gonna be a little bit different of a build. This is a what not to do with the Marvel Tank. We're gonna to go to the table here in just a second and open this up, see what's inside. This is a really cool, very premium looking model. Very cool possible in project or product, but in reality, based on the title, you can already guess something went wrong. I had a little bit of trouble with this bottle. I almost didn't make the build video because I made some possibly very serious mistakes while doing it. But in reality, the reason I make these videos so I can make the mistakes so you don't have to. So I'm still gonna put this video out there. I'm still gonna put the build out there with commentary, with comments on what I think I've done wrong. And I'm still gonna put this together and show you what I got. So let's go to the table, open this up, see what's inside, and start putting it together. Okay, boy am I excited. I don't know a whole lot about Time for Machine. I've talked a little bit about them. They did a Kickstarter and I completely missed it, which makes me sad. I don't follow a lot of Kickstarters because I keep myself so busy with things that I just don't. I don't know, we started seeing this one, but I have one now. This, this is really cool. This is like, this really gets my attention because it's mechanical. This really gets my attention because it's metal sheets, like the Metal Earth models, like the Peace Cool models, like the MU models, like the Mirror Picture Kingdom models. Uh, it, it gets my attention in so many ways, and I'm so completely thrilled to have one to attempt to put together. It's just showed up at my post office box, and I've seen videos of the inside of this, but now I get to see it for myself, and now you get to see videos. This is just top-notch of buildable metal model sheets. Check this out. We have on top, we have instructions for the Marvel tank. There's a lot of design detail that's going into this. And if you notice on the front, we have multiple languages included. Let's open this wonderfully feeling piece of paper of manual up. Again, lots of instructions. Warning, please read these instructions carefully. For, for assembly and use, and I haven't read them. When assembling the model, avoid rushing or pointing it at your face or anyone else's face. If one of these parts has a sharp edge, please file it down. Cool. Use pliers and additional tools that come with the kit to assemble the model. Each kit contains a cloth for wiping and polishing the model once it's assembled. If needs be, you may apply a small amount of silicon-based grease to the spring and the mechanism. However, this is not required for the mechanism to function properly. The mechanism will perform at its best in the observant absence of excess friction and excessive use of its parts. Interesting. And it's basically repeated numerous times. Warning products contain small parts, sharp parts, not suitable for children under three years of age. And this is all repeated in, in English, Russian, Dutch, French, and Spanish, it looks like. So that's pretty cool. And it is just such detailed looking instructions. Model parts and assembly tools. And you've got the different sheets. It looks like one, two, three, four, five sheets. It comes with a multitude of gears. One of them is three times. Most of them are individual sizes, but there's three of that size. You've got a metal spring, and you've got some tools and a cloth that come with it. And you're going to see that here in just a second. Standard solution for, I'm going to flip this over. Standard solution for nodes. for bending fasteners. Interesting. So I guess kind of like tabs but a little bit thicker. Interesting. I'll definitely go into more detail with this as I'm building it but it looks like it just has step-by-step -step instructions on assembling the different parts and putting this thing together. The gear teeth can have another shape. I mean, it looks like it's 
showing you the sheet and it's highlighting green the parts that you are using and then over here again highlighting in green parts that you are using plus it looks like other gears as well once I start putting this together I'm sure this will make more sense and I'll try to explain a little bit you know in the video as I build it but there's just sheet after sheet of how to put this amazing looking thing together and it looks like it's definitely going to be a unique build boy am I looking forward to it I love gears I love mechanics mechanical things just wow congratulations you're now an expert in tank building and is and an owner of an unrivaled Marvel tank briefly grazed over the assembly instructions what do we have next we have this weighty envelope here and if you've seen the videos you've already seen what's inside of here but as soon as I move this away you've already got a bit of a peek what's underneath this is really cool check this out this is what comes with it as well we have the cloth and a nice organized tray we have a set of pliers that you know they got a spring on them so they're going to want to pop out nice set of pliers I've actually put them in here upside down because originally they were I think this way and they have the time for machine little logo on them so very nice little set of pliers fitted into their little spot here we have a file very cool with a little rubbery handle so for filing down those sharp edges excellent we have our spring mechanism it looks like it's actually being held in with a band and I am not about to take that off right now I'm just gonna put that back in a slot before I cause a problem and then here you can see the gears and you can see how thick these gears are I don't know what metal that's made out of is very lightweight very solid feeling some sort of maybe aluminum I'm not sure very cool there's several of them they all have their own spot now to be honest when I open this up for the first time these gears and tools had come out of their respective places imagine in shipping that's just kind of unavoidable I don't know where this came from I'd have to look at the envelope but it had a obviously somewhat rough travel here and I just said that I didn't know where this comes from and it occurred to me hey why don't you go grab the envelope that it came in and look at the address and what I got was Columbus Ohio so not very far away after all however who knows how far it traveled before it got to Columbus Ohio I can't help but to think that maybe this came from out of the country now this envelope here rather thick thing if you open it up it's sort of accordion style and here we have the sheets and I'm going to pull one out it's easy to pull them out if you don't open it too far because the farther you open it the more it compresses against the sides but here is one of the sheets of metal parts and there are rather large parts so this doesn't appear to have maybe quite the small detailing of metal earth models I'll pull out another one it's mostly larger pieces and that's fine I am not complaining still very cool looking but you can see the top maybe you can see number two and this one is number one so the sheets are labeled and the one thing that I'm curious about these definitely feel thicker that what I'm accustomed to so what I've got here beside me is something to measure the thickness with and I'm gonna open it up and measure how thick is this metal and I get about 0.6 give or take it's registering 0 0.6162 it opened up a little bit when I slid it out but about 0.6 roughly 0.6 millimeters and as an example or comparison I have a 
Metal Earth model that I haven't quite started on yet. Here's a little behind the scenes. I've already opened it up and recorded opening the package, but I haven't built it. And I'm going to compare thickness and see is there a difference. I get, get about 0.3, which opened up a little bit once it took once I took it out. And try to do it upside down. So you get about 0 0.25, 0 0.26 on this. So that's the difference. 0 0.25, 0 0.26 compared to almost 0 0.6 on this one. So definitely a difference in thickness there. Doesn't seem like much, but you can certainly feel it. This is a thicker metal that I can actually hold this sheet by the corner and it doesn't flex that much. Much thicker metal. So this is a premium quality model right here. This is not cheap. This is quite a bit more price wise than a Metal Earth model, an Iconics model, Peace Cool model, or even an MU model. This thing not exactly sure I'd have to double check but I think it's about 80 or 90 dollars for this particular model but I can see why it's a much thicker metal it's got very nice instructions it comes with tools it comes with solid gears it comes with a spring this is pretty cool and I am so looking forward to putting this thing together I have no idea how long it's going to take I have a pretty good idea of how to build the Metal Earth models and the MU models and the other 3D metal models, but really not sure how this is going to go. So let's just uh, get set up and put this thing together. The metal here is much different than Metal Earth or similar models. I did not even try to use clippers to cut the parts off. I was fairly certain that not only would my clippers not work, but that I might damage them in the attempt. I pulled the parts back and forth to break the parts off of the tree, which left me with areas that needed to be filed down. The large gear did not seem to properly fit the part. I then realized that I had the wrong gear. I should have pulled one of the sheets of metal and not used one of the thicker gears. It was suggested to me to be sure to file the gears down smooth so that they mesh smoothly. I think this is a very good idea. This is another area where this model differs from other 3D metal models. There are tabs that hold these gears in place, but unlike what I am accustomed to, they do not twist or bend at 90 degrees. Instead, in this case, you pinch them inward into the cutouts that seem designed just for them to bend into.
I found that some of these parts that slipped together did not want to slip all the way together. Unfortunately, the file is a little too thick to fit inside the gap to file it open more. I had a files of my own, but they were not thin enough either. My only recourse was to keep trying to pull the parts apart and put them back together again until they wore down enough to slide together smoothly and all the way. I did try a few times to hold the file at an angle and that seemed to help some. In this situation, a slight twist is required to hold things in place, but only a slight twist is necessary. Over twisting might cause the parts to not function properly or something to break off. This metal is thicker and more force is needed to bend and twist it. Keep in mind that I have edited this video. I spent quite a bit more time sanding and filing than what I am showing here. I found these two parts to be an overly tight fit as well. In an attempt to loosen things up, I tried to sort of scrape the insides a little. I used two pliers to try and press the parts together all the way.
I had to do some filing down to get these gears on and into place. Once in place, I found that they would not turn at all, much less freely, like the instructions indicated they should. I then tried using a round file I had to file the inside of the gear a little. This seemed to work. When you're finished assembling this part, the gear should spin freely and there's a part inside of that that should freely slide back and forth. That part is supposed to slide over and lock the gears in place to control and turn off the individual tracks later. You might want to take a moment to make sure that those tabs sticking out will easily slide into the gaps on the gears. I found this part to be rather difficult. You need to bend these two tabs out of the way so that you can get the inner end of the spring around this part and the gap in the inner part of the spring over the square part of this bit. 
then you have to bend the tabs back, at least a little. I managed to get the end of this part in place inside the spring, but man, I had a time trying to get the tabs bent back over and hold things in place. I tried using some helping hands to hold things and didn't really help much. After much struggle, I managed to get the tabs bent over well enough. The instructions state to curve the flat section down just a tad. I didn't completely understand what it was asking me to do. I made an attempt to put a small bend on the area I thought the instructions were referring to, but I really could not make a bend in that thick, short metal. Instead, I kind of warped the thin bit of metal in between the section. I missed recording a couple of steps. The spring, with its one piece, go into the round part with the four bent up sides and another long thin piece slides in crossways. Put just a few winds of the spring inside the four bent up rods making sure that you are placing things as indicated in the directions. Push this plate until it is below the thin tabs and slightly twist out the tabs to hold the plate down. Now to wind the spring into the casing that you've just constructed. Before you wind the end inside, you want to hook it over one of the four posts. Check the directions to be sure you attach it to the correct one. This is why it was important to make sure things were oriented correctly in previous steps.
These two round springs have half circle pieces that bend out slightly. They are part of the locking mechanism of the spring. They allow it to wind up. Be sure to hold the parts correctly before you bend anything. This piece not being able to go all the way down clued me in that I had missed something. I should have twisted out a set of tabs under the gear to hold the gear and two discs up away from the spring. I realized as I am watching the build I only bent out two tabs when perhaps I should have been at four. It took numerous attempts to get these two pieces to slide all the way together. The fit was very tight. I was able to slowly make progress each time I pulled it apart and tried again. I would not suggest trying to use a lot of force and try to press the parts together. They do not go at first.
I have been warned not to overly twist these tabs holding the parts together. The metal is much thicker. You only need to give it a slight twist to lock things down. Too much and the pieces will break off. Pay close attention how the parts are positioned before you fold. I've said this before and the instructions warn you as well, but I want to reiterate. I did make a mistake and it may have been the cause of problems later. This little part gave me trouble. It didn't want to bend in just the right shape. One of the folds overfolded a little crooked. This is part of the pendulum that controls the speed of the mechanism. It's worth taking some time to try and get it right. This may be where I went wrong. I thought I was holding this part correctly when I started bending, but turns out I was not and folded things backwards. Later, I folded it around the correct way, being as careful as I could to do it correctly, but wonder if that threw things off.
And now it's time to start building the tracks. This part takes some time. Bend up the side pieces of one part or section and then attach another section to the curved joint and then twist the tails of the hooks inward to lock the part in place. One thing that I missed at this step, and it took me far too long to figure out, there's also a tab that needs to be bent up in each chain so that later on the gears will actually turn the tracks. Repeat this process about 43 times per saw. I found it necessary to sometimes pinch the tail in down a bit to hold the joint together. Not too tightly though, or the joint will not flex properly. Suffice it to say, making the two tracks took a while. I found myself building short links and then connecting those links together. Once you have built the chain, measure it as the instructions say to see if you need to stretch it. You likely will. I suggest using your own ruler or tape measure and not rely on the one in the instructions as the one in the instructions may not be accurate. These tabs only need to be twisted a little. I did not bend the longer ones at first. I was a little worried that I was misunderstanding the direction. The instructions show putting more gears in and then setting over other sections over the top. And unless you know some magic that I do not, those gears are not going to sit in place waiting for you to attach the old next part. When I set this assembly in place, it did not fit. And then I realized I had folded the main frame of the sub assembly backwards. I turned all the folded parts around the way they should be as fully and as carefully as I could. Things do not fold as cleanly the second time around.
Getting the side on was time consuming on its own, trying to get all the different arms and tabs lined up. Add to that adding the gears and brake mechanism inside and it got a little complicated. On page 21, the instructions make it look like you're just going to place these gears in their spot and they just somehow magically stay there while you place the other pieces on top. I'm guessing they just do that so you have an idea of what the placement is before they move on to the next step because in reality, you're going to have to kind of place that other side on and fish the individual gears in place one at a time to make them sit. It was at this point I wound up and tested the mechanism. It did not work as expected. I could not get it to go slowly, to tick. It would either go very quickly or jam. I ended up spending a few days tinkering with this part trying to get it to work properly before moving on. I made numerous adjustments of the square area behind the speed selector. I bent it up, I bent it down, I bent it a little to the side, slight angles, made many minute adjustments. Pulled the pendulum out and made minor adjustments to it as well and put it back made adjustments to the alignment of the gears, nothing would stick. I added in the rear section to try to give some extra stability to the frame in hopes that would help, but nothing seemed to work. I could not get a consistent result. I 
was able to get the mechanism to partially work before I decided to just move on. I found I had missed making two sets of axle gears on page 10, so I made the other and continued forward. Don't forget to file the parts smooth, especially the gears. The next step shows placing the rear gear in place and then the track and then placing the outer section on it. It was not going to happen like that. The track and gears were not just going to stay in place. I ended up placing the side on and then setting the gear in place and then tried several different ways to attach the track. The method I settled on was to stretch the ends of the track around the outside edge and then slowly work it all the way over the edge into its proper place a little at a time. It helped to have something to lift some of the links over, especially at the corners. The long slats between the inner and outer sides should be slightly twisted to hold the inner side in place and to keep the two sides separate. I also found that over time working trying to get the tracks on that those side pieces would get bent a little bit off and had to kind of readjust them back so that they were parallel and in line with the inner side.
I got all the parts attached, so I wound it up and gave the spring a test run, and it didn't move. It took me a ridiculous amount of time to realize I had forgotten a step when building the chain of the tracks. I forgot to bend down the little tabs so the gears have something to push and turn the track. took the track off and one by one fixed each individual link and put it back together. I did not get a good shot of me working the tracks into place. I will say that the method I used left the tracks a little loose. To compensate, I carefully pinched many of the joints together ever so slightly to shorten the overall length of the chain. And there you have it, all finished and complete. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about this because if you've been following my videos, I've gotten to the point here lately where I do a build video and a review video separately. So I'm going to talk a lot about this model in a separate review video. If you want to hear about that, there's a link here at the very end in the description down below how to get to that. But in a nutshell, this build did not go as nice and smoothly as I had hoped. And I made some numerous mistakes along the way. I would like to, at some point, give this another try. There's a lot of potential here. But, and I did finally get it working. In the end, this thing will actually move. But it doesn't, the gears, the selector, as far as making it go slow, doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And I really think that's my fault. So I don't want to give this... Don't want to give this a negative impression upon anyone about this build. It is more challenging. It is very different. It is a lot of fun. It's still really cool to put this together with the gears inside and have it actually wind up and work. But it is a different level of challenge. And hopefully, if you decided to build this, you'll find some parts, at least some parts, of this long review or long build video helpful. But definitely, I say this a lot, take your time. Make sure you are bending and shaping things the way that the instructions tell you to so you will end up with a product better than what I've got right here. If you want to know more about this build and the ins and outs behind it and my final review, check out my review video. If you're just looking to see how I went wrong, you know, honestly, there's some things, the way that I did things, I think I could do better the next time, but maybe one of these days I really would like to do this again and end up with a better product. I'll leave it at that. Thank you for watching. Thank you to Andrew on the screen for sending me this model for me to build. It was because of Andrew that I actually had the opportunity to make this model. So thank you very, very much. I'll leave it at that. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping up.